Well, um, once you've got an, uh, an artificial general intelligence, it won't be a single machine. It's basically software that's distributed over any hardware base that it can fit on, any, any computing platform. So it's not localized at any lo particular location. So it's, it's, its interface to the developers or to the users is where the interaction with us occurs. That is, unless we start coupling this to all sorts of physical hardware, defense systems, electrical grid, aircraft, ships, you name it. Basically, once you've got a really intelligent system, intelligent control means it's going to fit into all sorts of hardware as well. So if it wants to go rogue, it would have the means to do so very easily. But I don't believe in the Hollywood scenario. So basically, humans have goals and, and drives and ambitions and all the rest because we're evolved creatures. That's, it's our drives that keep us going as a species and individually. Now, a artificial general intelligence is not the result of an evolutionary process. So the only goals it has are the ones we give it. And it's the giving of those goals is where the crucial bottleneck is. If we give it the wrong goals, we're in serious trouble. If we give it uh, goals that are compatible with what we want, then it could be a golden age. Um, no one would need to work. Um, the knowledge that it would accumulate is just, would just be incredible. And we could, it could be a tutor to everybody. So anyone who wants to learn anything can interact directly with this AGI. The cost of it would be negligible because the cost of computing has largely disappeared now. So this would be a resource for enormous development in medicine, in, in science of all sorts, including computing. Um, but history, geography, uh, exploration of the deep ocean, Antarctica, space travel, these are all areas where an AGI would be uh, advance our knowledge and our abilities in a pace that would be, it's really hard to comprehend. Uh, some people refer to this as the singularity because the, the world would change so much and be so different than what we know today that we can't really even imagine what it's going to be because our imagination fails us because it's so far beyond anything we know or understand. Well, this is one of the areas that's really dangerous. Because if you just take the straightforward viewpoint by having it evolve, basically using humans or a committee of, of, of humans to vet any changes that it's going to make, and it explains to us why it needs to make these changes, and if they make sense to us, we okay those changes. Most of the time, that would work well. But don't forget, this is a machine that's far smarter than we are. So it may be able to gradually coax us into accepting changes that are actually detrimental to us, but it's fooled us into thinking that they're actually going to be beneficial. The only real question is, why would it want to do that? And that would be part of this very high-level goal structure. Is it One of the goals that we give it is, don't try to deceive us. Or, Try to benefit us, but don't try to deceive us about what, what is actually going on. And so if that becomes a top-level goal of the, of the AGI, then it, it won't want to, to make these, it won't want to do this, as opposed to be, not being able to. It certainly would be able to make uh, changes that would not necessarily be beneficial. Well, I've heard this word foom before, but I still don't really know what it means. But in terms of rapid development, I really believe we're on an exponential growth curve there, but every exponential growth eventually hits some kind of limits. Now, the kind of limits we're talking about are way more than any human um, intelligence. Just because the computer has so much more processing power, it can think without error, and it, can, it will be able to access a huge accumulation of knowledge in guiding its, uh, its deliberations. Now, no matter how much you um, try to uh, 
exploit this intelligence, you probably can't make signals travel faster than the velocity of light. And there's probably other limits that we don't know about. I mean, it, may, it will very quickly reach the point at which further processing power, it's, it's using the processing power it has to maximum advantage. And the only way it can be even more intelligent is by increasing the, um, the, the processing power base. But because it's so smart, it should be able to develop better computers and automated factories to make them. So even that would be a limitation that would be very quickly um, eliminated. So part of the problem of answering the question is this is already in the singularity area. We simply just don't know what the limits of knowledge are and how knowledge can ultimately limit what we can do. But if you look at the history of human development, just look what's happened in, in medicine and physics, astronomy, all of these areas where humans have been working on for centuries, they've advanced enormously, so much so that people from a few centuries ago just wouldn't recognize society as it is today. And I don't see any reason why a similar development wouldn't occur, but at a much faster pace once we reach this uh, superintelligence. Right, so th the only way I believe we're going to get superintelligence is if the artificial intelligence we're building is able to accumulate knowledge, basically build models of how the world works and individual models, things like how, how nations work, how countries work, how diseases work, how you know, all sorts of engineering. Basically, there's a huge amount of knowledge that needs to be built up. And this knowledge is useful for understanding new phenomena when it comes along, but also for um, when you do learn something, you integrate it back into what you already know. And in fact, all information coming in it should be filtered against this general background knowledge so that you can recognize when novel things are happening and focus your attention on trying to understand what, what is driving these novel events. So this ability to build, to accumulate knowledge, to build these knowledge bases, essentially we haven't even really got to the, the ground floor yet. We can learn individual models, but the integration into a large scale knowledge structure hasn't happened and doesn't look like it's gonna happen anytime soon. And the big problem with neural nets is the type of model they learn is not well suited to this knowledge accumulation. And so I actually believe the deep neural nets, which is the, the third generation of neural nets that's generated a lot of hype, while it's extremely useful and has provided some very uh, interesting and useful developments, is ultimately a dead end as far as developing an AGI is concerned. Well, what they're trying to do is they've, they've now got this powerful tool and they're trying to extend what it can do. And these are all tricks that various people are, are applying. And I have no doubt that as a result of these tricks, it'll be able to do even more things. But the real problem is the, the representation that's built into the neural net is just not the right kind of representation for cumulative learning. And so all these tricks won't help. I believe the more traditional AI approach where you're developing uh, logical reasoning systems and probability theory to handling uncertainty and decision theory for making optimal decisions is the way to go because these are the most highly developed theories that, that humans have worked on for centuries. And so it makes sense to use those as the basic tools. But how you use them, how you build models within these frameworks and then actually use these models to allow the system to reason about itself that's when the big leap from the leap will occur. When it's, sufficient, when it's sufficiently good at representing and reasoning about systems that it can reason about itself.